Hi, I'm Bob Lenner, and welcome to Pharma Research Video Report, where pharmaceutical, healthcare, biotech, and medical device market researchers go for news, insights, and commentary about their field that they just won't find anywhere else. And without further ado, let's get started. The big news is IMS Health's intention to acquire certain sizable Segedim information and CRM business assets for a cool $520 million. Already the world's largest pharma and healthcare market research agency, IMS had 2013 revenues of $2.5 billion. When this deal goes through, it will tack on another $573 million. Segedim's customer relationship management solutions for life science clients works in 80 different countries. And one key reference database insights about 13.7 million global healthcare professionals is another big part of the deal. Olney Nielsen Company is a larger research organization. It had sales last year of $5.7 billion. More important, when you look in the whole context of this deal, may be the new insights that IMS can access through these new information assets and potentially new multi-layered client knowledge that it may be able to discern by taking its existing information and bringing it together with Sedgedeems. Moving on. I think it's important to note the handful of announcements concerning new industry registries that are popping up because of their specific targeted disease state insights, like the Physical Therapy Outcomes Registry. It's being released by Quintiles and the American Physical Therapy Association, and it is designed to provide clini clinicians and physicians with benchmark data that improves healthcare delivery and achieves better patient outcomes. And then there's the even larger and perhaps more important Merck Global 20,000 patient type 2 diabetes registry. The company says this three-year initiative is part of a broader commitment to generate real-world evidence that advances diabetes care worldwide. Next, Johnson & Johnson rolled out 12 new alliances with life sciences companies and research institutions, and it's going to explore early-stage therapeutic innovation across pharmaceuticals, medical devices, diagnostics, and consumer health care. These collaborations will focus on specific fields like lymphoma and prostate cancer treatments, Alzheimer's, diabetes and cardiovascular disease, autoimmune diseases, and skin, oral, and respiratory conditions. Next, the Perelman School of Medicine at the University of Pennsylvania revealed in the journal Health Affairs that health policy researchers are deliberately limiting their use of social media to communicate research findings. Only 14% of individuals in the group report using Twitter and 20% say they will turn to blogs and Facebook when they want to pass on information. But the study explains that health policy researchers believe that although social media may effectively communicate, there is a distinct lack of confidence in using it, perhaps partially because of the feeling that their peers do not value or respect it. And in fact, many see social media as replete with unnecessary opinion and junk content. And finally, IDC Health Insights released Engaging Consumers in a Post-Health Reform Market. It is supposed to help payers effectively reach and engage various segments of their member populations. More specifically, the report emphasizes the payers' need to develop new strategies that obtain and maximize the attention, interest, and loyalty of newly participating healthcare marketplace consumers. That's this week's Pharma Research Video Report. If you are in the pharma, healthcare, biotech, and or medical device research sectors, become a Pharma Research Video Report sponsor. Several tests have demonstrated that we get a good size audience with substantial curiosity, and the audience grows over time and the video format is proving to be unique and increasingly popular. We're also working to make PRVR more accessible. For instance, it's now accessible in the cloud. So for those of you who can't view YouTube in your place of work, you've got another option. And you can also download our new mobile app for iPhone, iPad, and iPod Touch and view PRVR wherever you happen to be at any time on your mobile device by downloading the RBDR app from the Apple Store. 
with many new ways to view Pharma Research Video Report and the fact that it is still free, we hope that you're going to share this video and others we've put out with your friends and peers in the business. And we hope you have a great research week.